So in this lesson, we're going to talk about half-wave rectifiers. So let's connect the input to a transformer. And then this transformer is going to be attached to a conventional diode, which is attached to a resistor. Let's call this point A and point B. And here we have diode D1. Let's call this R. So what's going to happen in this circuit? At the input, we have typically an AC wave. So current can flow in this direction. And then it's going to reverse and flow in the other direction. In the US, the frequency is typically 60 hertz, which means that the current changes 60 times every second. Now, once we generate an AC wave at the output of the transformer, current will only flow in this direction. When it tries to flow in the other direction, the diode will block it. So the diode will allow current to flow in one direction. Thus, you can use a diode for a half-wave rectifier. You can convert an AC sine wave into a DC wave. So in AC, current is flowing in two directions, but in DC, direct current, it's flowing in one direction. So as the current flows this way, point A is going to be positive with respect to point B. So current will want to flow from A to B. So we're going to get a wave that looks like this. So at the input, we have a nice sine wave. Let me extend it. But at the output, we're only going to have the upper half of the sine wave. So the bottom half will be deleted. So what we really have is a pulsating DC wave, which I'm going to redraw it here. So the output looks something like this. It's a pulsating D DC wave. And so that is the half wave rectifier circuit. Now there's something called the negative half wave rectifier circuit. And in this circuit, the direction of the diode is simply reversed. So the diode is now facing this direction. Everything else is the same in this circuit. So once again, let's call this A and B. So this time, current can't flow in this direction. The diode will allow current to flow in the direction of the arrow that's in the diode. So current has to flow in that direction, which means current is going in this direction, so to speak. So B is going to be more positive with respect to A. So at the input, we still have our sine wave, which looks like this. But at the output, we're only going to have the bottom half of the sine wave. So the top half will be eliminated, but we'll keep the bottom half. So thus the output will look something like this. Thus it's called the negative half wave rectifier. And so we still have a pulsating DC signal, but it's just the polarity has been reversed. And so that's the basic idea behind a half wave rectifier. You're basically eliminating half of the AC signal, turning it into a pulsating DC signal. Now let's work on a problem with some calculations. So let's say if the input voltage is 120 volts AC, and that is uh, the RMS voltage. So that's applied to the input or the primary side of the transformer. And let's say the ratio of the primary turns in the transformer to the secondary turns is 9 to 1. 
And then we have our diode with a resistor. So what is the voltage that is the average DC voltage that will be measured by a voltmeter across points A and B? And let's say the voltage drop of the diode is 0.7 volts. So with this information, go ahead and calculate the average DC voltage across the resistor. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the RMS voltage that is produced on the secondary side of the transformer. So how can we do that? Well, there is a form that we could use, and that's this one. The ratio of the secondary voltage to the ratio of the primary voltage across the transformer is equal to the ratio of the turns on the secondary side compared to uh, the primary uh, side. So Vs over Vp is equal to Ns over Np. So we're looking for Vs. Vp, the voltage at the primary side, that is the left side. The left side is primary, the second, I mean the right side is uh, secondary. Ns is 1 and Np is 9. So if we cross multiply, this is 120 times 1. And then on the right side, 9 times Vs. So we need to divide both sides by 9. So the secondary voltage, the RMS value, is simply going to be 120 divided by 9. And so that comes out to be 13.33 volts. Now, we need to calculate the peak voltage in our next step. So the secondary voltage, but its peak value, is going to equal the RMS value of the secondary voltage times the square root of 2. So that's going to be 13.33 volts times square root 2. And the square root of 2 is about 1.4142. So if you multiply that by 13.33, you should get 18.85 as the peak secondary voltage of the transformer. And so that's what we're going to use in our calculations coming up. Now the next thing we need to do is subtract 18.85 by the voltage drop across the diode, which is 0.7. And so that will give us the peak voltage across the resistor. So that's 18.15 volts. Now if you connect the voltmeter, it's not going to read 18.15 volts. That's simply the peak voltage. Keep in mind, we have a half-wave rectifier. So at the output, the signal is a pulsating DC wave. So even though the peak of this pulsating DC wave is at 18.15 volts, that's not going to be the average voltage that is read by the voltmeter. So just keep that in mind. So how can we calculate the average voltage of the voltmeter? given us the DC, I mean given the DC peak voltage. So what do you think we need to do? Well, there is a simple formula that you can use. The average DC voltage is simply going to be the peak voltage divided by pi for a half wave rectifier. Not for a full wave rectifier, it's similar but it's a little different, but for a half wave rectifier it's going to be 18.15 volts divided by pi. Which is 5.78 volts. And so this is the answer. Now, if you want to understand the use of this formula, you have to know a little calculus. And so, here we have the positive cycle of the half-wave rectifier. And we need to find the area of the shaded region. So to get the average function value, you need to take the area and basically divide it by the length of, let's say, from point A to point B. So the, the basically the length or the width of that uh, region. And so this will give you the average function value. But in calculus, perhaps you've seen it like this. 
the average function value, let's say f average, is 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b, f of x dx. In this case, this function comes from a sine wave. But we have the top half of a sine wave function from 0 to pi with the amplitude, which is the peak voltage, 18.15 volts. So we could say that this function is represented by the equation v peak times sine x. And so we can see that a is 0, b is pi. So thus, continuing with the formula above, it's going to be 1 over pi minus 0, integral from 0 to pi. And the function is going to be the peak DC voltage times sine x dx. So I'm going to take this constant and move it to the front. So it becomes the peak voltage divided by pi, and the antiderivative of sine dx is going to be negative cosine x evaluated from 0 to pi. So I'm going to move the negative sign to the front. And then we need to plug in pi, so it's going to be cosine pi, and then plug in 0 minus cosine 0. Cosine pi is negative 1. And cosine 0 is positive 1. So we have negative 1 minus 1, and so that's negative 2. So therefore, we could say that the average the average DC voltage is 2 times the peak voltage divided by pi. Now, this would be true for a full wave rectifier. In a full wave rectifier, we have a pulsating DC that looks like this. So this would be 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so forth. However, for this particular example, we have a half wave rectifier. And so the bottom half disappears. It's removed from the equation. So notice that the area under the curve, I missed that, is half of what we see here. So for the half wave rectifier, we need to multiply this by a half, which will cancel with the two. Thus, the average DC voltage becomes the peak voltage over pi. And so this is the case for a half wave rectifier. But for a full wave rectifier, which I'll cover in another video, it's going to be twice the value. It's going to be two times the peak voltage over pi. And so that's how you can derive the formula to calculate the average DC voltage when using either a half wave rectifier or a full wave rectifier. And feel free to check out my video on full wave rectifiers.